The Kennedy Space Center is now closing for the evening. We hope you enjoyed your stay with us. The center is usually open from 8.30 till 5 weekdays. But due to next week's Camelot moonshot, there will be no more bus tours until after that project has been completed. Thank you, and good night. Remember, Mr. Albrock, you promised. Oh, E.J., yes, I guess I did. Remember, E.J., five minutes. Astronaut E.J. Macronet Jr., wouldn't that be something? Hey, why not? Why not? Okay, okay. But just remember, I warned you as well. Just remember, I didn't let you down. Thanks, Joy. We are now T minus 10 hours and counting on the Camelot moonshot. We are now T minus 10 hours and counting on the Camelot moonshot. Don't forget, it was me who gave you the first push to the moon. Pad safety inspector, report to swing arm nine. Repeat. Pad safety inspector, report to swing arm nine. The red crew to number seven elevator. The red crew to number seven elevator. Check now complete. Mainstays propulsion check now complete. You all right down there? I'm, I'm okay. O'Brien. Locks to fueling test now complete. Locks to fueling test now complete. Locks to fueling test now complete. Pressured and holding.
Pad safety inspector, report to swing arm nine. Pad safety inspector, report to swing arm nine. This is it, Joey. The astronaut walked to the White Room. Almost there, Joy. Almost there. over the television. What kind of sloppiness is that? Okay, Archie, let's have a rundown on the system. All right. Here is precisely how the spacecraft checks out. Food and water consumables, eight days with a four-day reserve. ECS checks out nominal. What's the weather say? They're gonna go? Weather says intermittent rain. V-bus override. V-bus override. Check. You think it'll clear, Rick? Well, let's hear it from the man with the weather report. Yes, sir, Captain Lawrence. Recon reports a small cumulonimbus in the overcast. Okay, Lenny, let's hear it in English. What do you figure the odds that weather will give us go for launch? Well, right now, Rick, you've got less than a 50-50 chance. Less than 50-50? Camelot, this is flight control. Go ahead, Control. We've got a little problem. Ah, uh, what's on your mind? The computers show you 87 pounds overweight. What? What?
We'll plug in the backup bank. Maybe the computers are giving us a false reading. I'm sure that's it. Let me know. Meantime, crew, how's about some checkout procedures? Sorry, Rick, but the backup computer also says you're 87 pounds overweight. It makes no sense. It cannot be. I want to speak to the flight director in Houston. Put Charlie Engelhardt on. Yeah, I'm on, Rick. I've been listening in. Charlie, what's all this flack about 87 pounds? Isn't that a minor thing for a red line? Why don't you bring anything extra aboard with you? Souvenirs, maybe? Souvenirs? Was well, there anything extra left in the uh, cockpit by the white room team, Hans? We don't use anything in here that weighs 87 pounds. Look, Charlie, this is ridiculous, but just for safety, Dave and I will go through all consumable weights again. We'll do that. And you are now T-minus 59 minutes, 40 seconds. Ready, Dave? Ready. Now, just where do you think Quiet you're going? Quiet and listen to me. First, I'm Eli McEnut. Chairman of the English department at Titusville High School. Second, I have an 11-year-old son. Third, my son is aboard the spacecraft Camelot. Would you say that again? What about the garbage compartment? Oh, come on, Ansi, we got no garbage yet. Check it. Right. Hey, it's a rain. That's what's causing the extra weight. Right then, Charlie. Yeah. We've got it. It's the rain, Charlie. All that water collecting on the rocket. It's flowing down over the locks tanks and freezing. We just got 87 pounds of ice. I'm sorry, Rick. The flight has already run a calculation on that. The rain adds some weight, but not that much. Look, Charlie, this isn't a go, no-go decision, is it? I mean, can we handle this by... Do it my way, Rick. Keep looking. Hmm? Check everything out fast. In the meanwhile, I'll get the computers to allow for a weight discrepancy. Let me through, and I mean now, immediately! My son's life's at stake! Just shut your lip, mister! run out, fellas. Lock it up. Okay, Auntie, close up that hatch. Good luck. Okay, man. Hit the couches. Ladies and gentlemen, with the sudden break in the weather, our chances for launch are much improved. I demand to see the man in charge. I know I don't have a badge. I don't work at NASA. I want to see someone now! What's going on? They just ran the West Gate. Well, who are these people? First, I'm Eli Macronaut, chairman of the English department of Titusville High School. Our son is aboard that rocket. It's not a rocket, Mary. It's the spaceship Camelot. Our son is aboard the spaceship. The distinction oh, being... Your son is what? Our son is aboard the spaceship. You have a stowaway. He's only 11 years old. Now, who are these people? They ran the West Gate. I tried to... That's, so that's immaterial to... at the moment. The fact is, I had to get in here somehow to stop this mission. Stop the mission? You're not listening to me. I want you to pay attention. You have a stowaway on board. Excuse me. Stall for time, for God's sake. All right, you guys. Yes, Lamb. Local weather is within acceptable range. You trying to tell us something? Damn right. Go for launch. <laughs> what was that? That was our civilian passenger expressing approval. Roger, Lenny. Go for launch. T minus 17 seconds. Swing arm back. We're on internal power, and we're go. Houston, flight, go. Go, Roger. Recorded the flight speed. 12. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0.
tower is clear. Over to Houston. Systems go, Houston. Escape tower jettison. T plus three minutes. 94 miles downrange. 326,000 feet altitude. Second stage activated. Orbital speed, 17,500 miles per hour. You better believe it. I'm a bird, I'm a plane, I'm Superman. What's this thing called gravity? I never heard of it. It's something they have down there, invented by a guy named Newton. The folks down there, commonly called inhabitants, have been stuck with it for umpty up million years. And man, we just got rid of it. Oh Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll follow me, we'll join the others for our tour. Whatever gave you the idea that your son is on board that ship? I uh, received a note from my son. Yes. Stating his intention of stowing on board that spacecraft. And you believed it? Mr. Brady, you don't know my son. Mr. McInerney, has it once occurred to you, just once, that you're the victim of a practical joke? That your son is home, right now, laughing his head off. No one plays practical jokes on me. Go home, Mr. McInerney. Come on, Leon, maybe he's right. I want to go home and see. All three astronauts are enjoying the view up there from 177 nautical miles above the Earth. Second number, 428. 026, 428, computer has it. Camelot, you've got a stabilized platform. You have a go for TLI in six minutes, 14 seconds. Thank you, Charlie. We'll now align for Burns. Stand by. How about two more degrees of left yaw, Captain? Tell me all about it. Houston, I have the pyros armed. Roger, pyros armed, five seconds. Ignition. We should have the word on the burn any second now. Cut off, Houston. Roger, we copy cut off. Velocity, 35,570 feet a second. Altitude, 177 miles. Well, there you have it, the TLI burn. That's translunar injection burn. It was good. With this key maneuver, the spacecraft accelerates from 17,500 miles an hour to 25,000 miles an hour, the velocity required to escape the Earth's gravity. This means that the spacecraft, the three knights of Camelot, are now committed to two and a half days' journey to the moon. From now, there can be no turning back. Stay tuned for further Camelot moon. Hey, hey, nothing can stop us now. Only one thing. What? Catastrophe. Never heard of it. <laughs> T 
Teacher, may I leave the room? You know where the blue bags are. What is it, Ben? Holy Toledo. What's the matter? Camelot, say again, your last transmission was garbled. Camelot, this is Houston. Come in, please. What's going on? Rick, that 87 pounds overweight we had at liftoff? Yeah. Camelot, this is Houston. Come in, please. Camelot, this is Houston. I found it. Camelot, will you come in, please? It's alive. It's what? Camelot, will you come in, please? Come in. Camelot, Houston. Come in, Camelot. Come in. No. Yes. It's a boy. No. Then what is it? It's a catastrophe. Camelot? Houston. Come in, Camelot. What's your name, kid? Come in. Are you all right? Camelot. Come in, Camelot. Dave, say something to the ground. Stroll around. Uh, Houston, Camelot here. Just stand by. I'll be with you in a second. Camelot, this is Houston. Rick, we're reading an accelerated heart rate on you. Are you OK? I'm OK! Here goes the mission. Here goes the whole ball game. Are you going to tell him on the ground? No, we're going to keep it all to ourselves. It's our little secret, man. Why are you all talking in whispers? Houston can't hear you. He just flipped off the switch. What's your name? E.J. Macronet, Jr. I live in Titusville. Camelot. Come in, Camelot. Ten minutes of transposition and docking. Do your parents know about this? I left them a note, but... I made sure they wouldn't get it until it was too late. Oh, how I hate to hit Charlie with this. Look, Rick, here's the page on the abort plan. There's 18 reasons to cancel landing on the moon. Not one of them says anything about a stowaway. Well, some things just can't be anticipated, even in the rule book. We've got to abort. What if we have an emergency? Three of us could live off our suits, but not four. I won't be in the way. I can help you. I know I can. I've steadied up. And I can... Dave, set me up in the private line. Charlie? He's on the private line. Rick, what's going on up there? Why the private line? Is there anyone there with you besides Capcom? Yeah, Doc Smathers, your friendly astronaut position. I'm here, Rick. What's going on? Charlie, I'm on private because I don't want to blast this into the press center for the whole world to hear. Yeah. Charlie, we've got a stowaway. What? What'd he say? What'd he say? One male human being. A uh, weight, presumably 87 pounds. Name E.J. Mackinac, Jr. Age 11 years. Charlie, there are now four of us. Do you read me? Over. Put them on. Let me talk to them. Put that in your ear. Yes, sir. How was the ride going up? Uh, not bad, sir. A little bumpy, but the garbage compartment was padded with blue bags, so I, I didn't have. What's your father's name? E.J. Mackinac, Senior. Where do you live? Titusville. What's your phone number? Two two five nine six four six. Okay, put the cap back on. Stay in the loop around mode. Consider the descent unlikely as of this moment. Your little passenger has got a lot to answer for. How'd he get in there anyway? You're going to the moon, but thanks to him, I doubt whether you're getting off. Reed? Roger. How in bloody... How did you get in here? 
Go on, E.J. Sure, we got all the time in the world, you know. Well, we needed more money for the model. What model? It's quarter scale to save money. Joey even wanted to make it smaller to save more money. That's our big problem, money. Well, who's Joey? Joseph E. Williams, Jr. He's my friend. The two of us in on it. You see, we're building it for the science fair. If we win a prize, we both have a chance for a college scholarship. Dad, we'd have made it full scale, only we made it smaller to save money. That's our big problem, money. Well, how'd you boys get the money to go as far as you did? Well, Joey had a paper route. And I made money selling snakes to tropical paradise. And we sold watermelons and... Yeah, go on. Well, we really had two problems. Money and my dad. I can't understand why you can work on your contraption all weekend and still not find it expedient to do your homework on Sunday night. I'll do them in the Monday morning study hall, like I always do. As I always do. Eli, all boys like to pretend. Aren't you always telling your students about Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn pretending about the Mississippi and about being riverboat captains? E.J. just wants to be captain of a spaceship, that's all. And Mr. Hudson, his science teacher, tells me that he is just stubborn enough to do something very special with his life. He's stubborn, all right. They didn't ask us for a single dime for this project. They did it all by themselves. I realize that, Mary. My complaint is that his grades are going down. What if he doesn't win at the fair? Then what are his chances for a scholarship? You know I can't afford to send him to college. Then what would that stubborn, kooky, brilliantly gifted little boy do with his life? Yeah, how'd you solve your problems? That's where the best friend Joy and I ever had came in, Mr. Averill. Now, Mr. Averill, he keeps bees way down on the Indian River among the swamp hares, coons, possums, and the big daddy alligators. Hi, Mr. Averill. Hi, Mr. Averill. Let's have a slice or two before we head out. Yeah, I'm hungry. Good to see you again. Now, this royal jelly I mixed with the honey. It's what the bees use to make a queen bee. It'll make a regular bee 20 times the size of an ordinary bee. Will it make me grow? You keep asking me that. Because he wants to grow to be at least five feet seven. Why just five feet seven? Because that's the shortest an astronaut can be. But don't make him grow too much, because an astronaut can't be over six feet. Uh, E.J., you tell your mama she bakes the best bread I ever ate. Now what can I do for you? We need some more money to finish our model, Mr. Averill. You see, Mr. Averill knows the best banks for blue crabs. Blue crabs? Well, you have to know where to fish them. It was the greatest fishing spot. Man, did we catch crab. You see, you get 50 tons of pound for crab any day of the week, and just that afternoon alone, we caught 10 pounds. See, all the guards around the spaceport, they let Mr. Averill do his fishing there. Well, because he used to live there. I mean, before they built the spaceport. Uh, uh, this place used to be a regular eater. Only nowadays, I call it Land's End. What's Land's End? South coast of England is a place called Land's End. In olden times, wives and widows could watch the great sailing ships go over the horizon, heading for the new world. 
into the great beyond. But here, ships don't go over the horizon. They go straight up through the atmosphere into the great unknown. So I call it Land's End. But what the devil are the blue crabs got to do with it? Camelot? Yes, Charlie. Proceed with transposition and docking. T and D, yes, sir. You heard the man. Come on, E.J. When Command Module Pilot Ben Pelham separates the Command Module from the third stage of the rocket, the protective doors that have been covering the LEM throughout the launch leave at the same time. He then rotates the spacecraft 180 degrees and using his attitude control system, flies back in and docks with the LEM. He then withdraws the LEM from the third stage. Now the reason for this transposition and docking maneuver is if any emergency arose, the crew now has access to two life support systems, one in the command module and one in the LEM. Well, we just attached the lunar module to Camelot. Yes, sir. So now you have the oxygen from the module if you need it, right? Right. In the previous installment, you were catching blue crab. Huh? Oh, yeah. Well, it was on that trip that I got the idea of sneaking in here. Because I got such a good look at the lay of the land, I knew I could do it. I really did. I had this dream of flying in space. But until that moment, that's all it was, a dream. The timing seemed perfect when Mr. Abril gave us his outboard to fish in for a week. We just took it out and cut the motor when we got near the island. The hard hat Joey took from his father's closet, and I made the identification badge. What'd you take the toolbox for? Well, so I could look like a pad worker, and also for good luck. For good luck? A toolbox? Well, yeah, like your baseball cap. Huh. Yeah, go on. Well, we got near the parkway in the railroad culvert. Then all we had to do was tie up the boat and take a long walk underground. You mean there's another one like you down in some tunnel? Oh, sure, but Joey got back all right. Well, what makes you so sure he did? Uh, Washington knows about it. I've already talked to Dr. Dykes. He presumably has given a poop to the president. And then I called Canaveral in the direct line. But in both cases, I swore everybody to secrecy under pain of capital punishment. Not one word of this must get out until we hold that press conference tonight at 9. Do you realize that this whole project could go down the drain? Well, because this 11-year-old kid busted through our fences, penetrated all our security, and stashed himself in the garbage compartment. Well, the whole world would be laughing at us if we don't handle this properly. Charlie. I haven't even contacted his parents for fear of a leak. Nobody must know, outside of authority, until we have that press conference. Charlie, they know. Who knows? Is his name Eli, too? It's Eli Jordan Macronut, Jr. We tried to tell the people at NASA our son was on board. We tried to tell the guard at the gate. We reported Eli's presence to the NASA people in the press gallery. But nobody believed us. We were dismissed preemptorily from the premises. Is his name Eli or E.J.? Eli. But he likes to be called E.J. He must be some boy. He's stubborn and he's... He is some boy. Well, here it is, short and sweet. We'd intended to keep all of this a deep, dark secret until 9 o'clock tonight and release it properly. But the news is leaked. It's all over the networks. Tomorrow, it'll be in every morning paper from Oshkosh to Moscow. Your little passenger has turned $90 million worth of blood, sweat, and science into a great big joke. Charlie. Stick strictly to routine till you hear from me. And right now, two of you are supposed to be grabbing some sleep. Oh, excuse me. Three of you. Mind the store, Ben.
Mr. Pelham, could I ask you something? Name's Ben. Ben, could I ask you a question? Shoot. Camelot never loses pressure either before or after the module lands on the moon, right? Right. So why are we scrubbing descent? It doesn't make sense. You're scheduled for about 20 lunar orbits while Little Dipper's on the moon's surface. It adds about 40 hours to our present timeline. We've got more than enough consumables for that. Why can't we just do the original as planned? Where'd you learn to dig all this stuff? Well, I don't know a whole lot, Captain. I've studied an awful lot about space, though. I learned all I could, and, well, everything I know says we're still go. So why did they scrub descent? You know, Rick, the kid's right. By all logic, everything's still go. Everything but the key factor. Which is? Charlie Engelhardt and all those monkeys on his back. It's all right for us to sit up here hollering, go, go, go. Just imagine what Charlie's going through down there on the ground. How far are we away from the moon, Captain? I'd say about 215,000 miles. Camelot. Why the private link, Capcom? I figured you might want to keep your reactions private to uh, what you're about to hear. What are we about to hear? Item from the UPI, lead paragraph. A full congressional investigation into the presence of a stowaway aboard Camelot was demanded here today by Senator Cletus Redburn. Senator Cletus Redneck. Any good news? Yes, believe it or not. Uh, AP Los Angeles. In a quickly called interview this morning, Dr. Willard Krauss, chief lunar science investigator, told the press... This is the only landing scheduled for the Altai Highlands, where we have a chance to find the oldest igneous rocks on the moon. There is not enough budget money to reschedule the mission. Dr. Krauss said further that he was convinced the presence of an unauthorized passenger did not technically prohibit the descent of two astronauts to the moon. Anybody else share them sentiments? Well, sure. People are taking positions all over the place. Even the president. Oh, what's the president have to say? Quote, I have the greatest respect for Mr. Engelhardt's ability to deal with the situation as he alone best sees it. Where is the flight director? Fast asleep, finally. Oh, he told me to check with you before he sacked out about that uh, TV thing you're scheduled to do. TV? Yeah, 50 minutes at 11.30. Take a look at your schedule. Oh, yeah, 11.30. That's 20 minutes from now. Yeah, we'll uh, spin a few food packets in the air and uh, uh, show them Earth from the portable camera and uh, give them a little of the usual vaudeville. <laughs> OK, I'll tell Charlie. No, no, don't tell Charlie. Let him sleep. Do you hear me? Let him sleep. Okay, okay. What do you think of our smorgasbord, EJ? Peaches and juice. Wow, and these frankfurters are just great. Music, anyone? Ben. you're gonna get a negative from Charlie. Subside, Dave. Let's give Charlie a little surprise. EJ, you know how you've been talking about the way you don't want to stop the mission and all that? Yes, sir. All right, EJ, now don't be nervous. You ever hear of Shirley Temple? Yeah, well, my old mama told me that every time little Shirley went to face the cameras, her mama said two words to her. You know what they were? 12 seconds. 11, 10, Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, mark. Ladies and gentlemen of the world, the Earth, the universe, 
Welcome to the cockpit of the spaceship Camelot. Now approximately 205,000 miles from our destination, the moon. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we could show you some tricks with weightlessness, but since our time is limited, we thought at this stage of the game, we'd show you what you really want to see. We'd like to introduce you to our extra passenger. Ladies and gentlemen, Eli Jordan Mackinac Jr., better known to all of us up here as EJ. EJ? Sparkle, Shirley. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I'd like to apologize to Mr. Engelhart and to everyone at NASA for all the trouble I've caused. I would have never hidden the garbage compartment if I had thought it would have caused the landing on the moon to be canceled. Second of all, I'd like to ask a question. Is my friend Joseph E. Williams okay? Yeah, EJ, I'm okay. I made it easy. I did just what you told me. Joey. Your friend Joey is okay, EJ. You got home safe and sound. Oh, that's great, Joey. Let's just uh, oh, talk to you later. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'd like to say to my father, who's a fine teacher in, in Titusville, Florida, and to my mother and, and to anyone else who's interested in what it feels like to journey out into space in nothing but your street clothes. All I want to say is it feels pretty good. Why isn't he wearing his glasses? I you feel completely safe up here. The, the extra G-forces of launch, they were no problem be, because I had all that padding in the garbage compartment. It's filled up with plastic bags. And I've had a nap, and I slept very well, and compliments to whoever prepared this face food. I especially like the Frankfurters. Should I tell them why I wanted to fly in space? Say anything you want to, EJ. Okay. My idea was was that if somebody wanted to fly in space, besides an astronaut, somebody like me who's had no training, well, just who isn't an astronaut, then, then maybe people get to understand that, well, that flying in a spaceship is just like flying in a ship or a plane. Everybody will see how, how safe it is, how really safe it is. And then there won't be any more talk about about taking money away from the space program, and, and people will get to realize how, how easy it's going to be to go to all kinds of places, like Europe and, and China and Africa, and then to Mars. I just want to say that, that we all feel in, up here that, that we should be allowed to proceed with the lunar landing. That's not just my opinion. Everybody on board concurs. I know Mr. Englehart has a very difficult decision. Please ask him to not base that decision on my being here. I mean, how dangerous it is for me. If it is a risk, then, then I'll accept it. Well, I, I accepted it even before I left the Earth. I, I mean, it was it was just more dangerous getting here than, than it is to ride along in this spaceship and, and do nothing but eat frankfurters and enjoy the scenery. As Dr. Krauss said, this may be our only chance to find the oldest rocks on the moon. It would be an awful waste if we didn't bring some back. As long as we have the chance, <clears throat> we... Oh, but I see my time's up. Oh, thank you very much. So much for fun and games in space. Let's put one on the record right now. Neither I nor anyone else here is going to be conned or blackmailed or pressured into changing a mission decision made in this room. The decision to scrub dissent stands exactly as it was.
Yes, Mr. President. Camelot, come in. Camelot here. You guys in any kind of a mood for a brief summary of the news? Is it that bad? Well, no, not more than 99% uh, bad. You know, there's been a uh, slight semantical change of attitude towards your passenger. Semantical? Uh, yesterday they referred to him as a stowaway, and today he's the fourth astronaut. All the uh, wire news stories carried his speech complete. And here's an article by Dr. Horace Fishbein. Put me on the private line. Yeah, sure. Stand by, Rick, will you, for Charlie on the private line? Captain Lawrence? I take this opportunity to advise you that what you pulled was one dirty, lousy, filthy, stinking trick. You knew damn well that I'd never countenance any direct broadcast by that boy. Charlie. You deliberately bypassed permission. You broke every damn rule in the book. But you realize that I am being chewed out by every sniveling little scientific expert who sees a chance to nibble away at our slice of that federal pie? Charlie. I've had my ears punctured by everybody, from the press to the president. You listening? Yes, sir. All right, then hear this. I'm fed up with everybody blaming me for your, your cheap shot. I'm so fed up that I'm giving you a go on dissent. Say again? I said go. You have a go on dissent. Land on that moon. make out things on the dark side. I can see Kepler, I see Clavius, I can even see the Terminator. Its edge is on the Sea of Rains. I see Tycho. Hold on, Tycho. Yeah? All right, now follow the ray down into the brighter highlands. Now that crater is polar bias. The one above the ray? Right. Now, just to the left of polar bias is a ridge. I see it. That's Altai. That's our target. You all right? Yeah, why? Five minutes, 32 seconds to LOS. LOS means loss of signal. We're about to fly around the backside of the moon. And as soon as we get the moon between us and the Earth, there's going to be a loss of all communication with the Earth. For how long? Well, do we come around the other side. Now, if that LOI burn is good, that'll take 33 minutes more or 2,160 miles. Yes, Mr. President. Engelhardt here, sir. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I can't tell you that. We've had LOS. LOS, that's loss of signal, sir. They're behind the moon right now. If successful, we uh, expect AOS in about uh, 26 minutes, sir. Uh, that's acquisition of signal, sir. When we're back in touch. And as I say, that should be in about 26 minutes. Thank you, Mr. President. Houston calling Camelot. Come in, Camelot. Houston calling Camelot. Come in, Camelot. Uh, Roger, Houston. The burn was good. Charlie? We are in lunar orbit. Coming up on the crater Langrenus. 69 miles up. Cirque burn was good. We're going to clean up the cockpit and go into the sleep cycle. You hear that, E.J.? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Astronaut number four, it's time you started paying your way. You see that hose over there? Yes, sir. That's a vacuum cleaner. Go get it. Turn on the pet cock. Get busy. Yes, sir.
access checkpoint button hook. There's Jennifer. Yeah. On our approach, we should be at 50,000 feet over Jennifer. Button, Hook, and Jennifer. You ever get this funny feeling of having seen them before? <laughs> Are you all right? There it is. Just beyond the Just a touch of motion sickness. Look, Eric, my friend. There's got to be a flat place. Houston, this is Camelot. Come in, Camelot. We've had a good look at our approach. We are go from here. Go for undocking. Roger, Houston. Pressure up for Little Dipper. E.J., give me a hand here. Negative. This is gonna wash us out now, you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, let's close that hatch. We're away. Separation was a good one. No bones broken and very little shake-up. We just got word here in the studio that the LEM has separated from the command module. All right, Camelot. Now that we're on dock, how do we look? Just great, Rick. Capcom, this is Little Dipper. <sighs> as soon as they're on the surface, if I'm not over this by then, I'm gonna have to advise Capcom. Descent orbit insertion. Go for DOI. They're about ready to go into DOI. That's descent orbit me. insertion. I know. Dipper. What the devil's wrong with ground communication? You will go for power descent initiation. Go for PDI. Say again, Houston, you're dropping out. They said you're go for PDI. Go for PDI, Roger. Thanks, Camelot. Thanks, EJ. You acknowledge a little different. Oh, I don't like these data dropouts. Take your high three. Strike two, ball three, base is loaded, and the radio goes on a blink. 4,000 feet, fuel nominal. 1,800 feet. 1,000 feet. I've lost them. There's nothing I can recognize. I don't see Jennifer, Rick. If we're on target, we'd see Paula Bias now. Isn't this an abort situation? You're very weak. Abort? Very weak. We had data dropouts on you all the way down. Down two and a half, 35 feet, picking up dust. Drifting to the left, down two and a half. Contact, light. Okay. Engine stop. Your position is clear. Okay, Houston. We're down. Yay! Got a fairly low stance. We're slightly tipped to the west. Don't know for sure it's Altai. Doesn't look blocky enough. I mean, it's too smooth. There's not many rocks at all. I think... Here we go. Backside of the moon, LOS again. 
Why'd you disconnect your body sensors? I don't want them to know on the ground I'm sick. You're awful cold. There must be something I can do for you. Yeah. Just don't go away, huh? These data dropouts during descent could be a problem. Unless the computers know exactly where the astronauts are, the rendezvous and docking could be in jeopardy. As you know, the LEM, the lunar module, affectionately known in this case as Little Dipper, does not have enough fuel to go hunting around. Houston to Camelot, come in. Camelot? Ben, we still don't know where they are. Would you look at your charts? Roger. Ground communication is totally on the blink. Shouldn't we have heard from them by now? You think they're okay? As you overfly, try to spot their position for us. That may be the only way we can get a position check. You read me? Ben? Ben? Charlie? Anything wrong? Is Doc Smathers there? Right here, Ben. Doc, I'm sick. We're having a little trouble with your body sensors. Will you check your connections, please? Loose connections. They're tight now. Doc, I didn't report this at first because I didn't think it was serious, but she's building up on me. Take it easy. I'm checking your pulse, your respiration, and your body temperature. Did you take anything out of that medical kit? Uh, llama teals. Drama me. Mrs. Engelhardt, E.J., what's going on? Yes, sir, Mr. Engelhardt. Ben's fainted. What should I do? E.J., listen to me, son. We've got to get him on more direct oxygen. Now get his helmet on and quick. Be sure it's sealed. Now check the body controls. Sir, I don't know a thing about the suit. Quick, flip on the cockpit video. Okay, we've got the picture. Now we'd better move fast. You've got another LOS coming up in another uh, about two minutes. First, plug in his air inlet hose. It's plugged in. Okay. Now you see that round gauge down on his belly? Yes, sir. Put it on full. Full. Look up at the EC panel. You see the environmental controls? Yes, sir. Raise your hand. Move it to the right. More. Now stop. Touch that dial. Move two dials to the right. That's it. That's the O2 selector. Now put it right in mid-seat position. Okay, now right above that is a toggle switch. Hit it. Now raise the guard first. That's right. Now hit it on. Okay, good boy. I hear hissing. Does that mean his oxygen is coming in? That's what it means. EJ, watch his eyelids. Let me know if they start to flutter. They're not moving. We've got to watch the suit temperature. Do you know where the suit temperature gauge is? No, sir. Now look at the end of the suit tubes where they're plugged into the panels. You see the gauge over there? Now I see it. What does it read? 65 and rising. Okay. Move the arrow mark temp to high. What do you want, 70, 72? No, no, 80. We've got to get him way up. We've got a double heartbeat here. Make it 80. This is Capcom. Warning. 23 seconds to LOS. EJ? Yes, sir, Mr. Engelhart. Has Ben done any vomiting? Oh, yes, sir. Now, one thing must not happen. He mustn't up Chuck in his helmet. You understand? He choked to death. That's the big danger in this weightless state. If it does happen, there's only one way to save him. Now look over there to your right. Do you see that? Doctor, his eyelids are fluttering! They're fluttering! They're fluttering! He's, he's vomiting. He, he's vomiting! Clean it out. To the right! For 
face feels much warmer. Hey! Camelot, this is Houston. Come in, Camelot. Camelot here? Man, are you all right? Yeah. EJ, you're doing fine, just fine. Now listen, I want you to get two potassium tablets. Ben will show you where they're at. Mix them with some juice and feed it to them every 30 minutes. You got that? Potassium tablets, yes, sir. EJ, I want to talk to you privately. Get on the private link. Ben will show you where it is. I know where it is. Yes, sir. EJ, we don't know, and Dave and Rick don't know, just where they are. We lost our telemetry while they were going down. You follow that? Yes, sir. All right, now, Little Dipper does not have enough fuel to take off and start looking for you. But there is a way for you to spot them, just by using your eyes. So get your nose right over to that window and start looking for Little Dipper. If you have to, use the monocular. You know what that is? Yes, sir. OK, go. I just oh, can't I see Altai. Here, yeah, let me roll us around. I think we're off, Richard. Way, way off. Ground communication is totally on the blink. No. Hey, kid, you think you can fly this thing? All you have to do is tell me what to do. Hear that, Charlie? Let EJ do it. All right, come on, get up here. All right, EJ, this is going to be a roll, left roll. Now get ready. Get ready to juice it. All right. That a boy now. Let it roll. Easy. Don't over control. That's it. All right, get ready now. Back thrust. That's it. Now hold it. All right, take your hand off. That a boy. Well done. Mr. Englehart? Come in, EJ. Ben's asleep now. I guess we'll let him rest for a while. This is the third pass, and I still see nothing. I am now positive that Little Dipper did not land anywhere in the target area. I think on the next pass around, we better go looking someplace else. OK, do it. It appears that Ben Pelham is still too weak to come to the window. If they're going to be found, it looks as if EJ will have to do the finding. Camelot can always try an orbit location for us, can't they? Dick Gordon found Intrepid that way on Apollo 12. Okay, I agree. We'll go out and look around. An hour stay, maybe two. Ben, wake up! What? I just saw something like a sun flash. It's Little Dipper. It's got to be them. Wait a minute, what rev are we in? Seven. We got around seven times? Yep. It's got to be them. Right there. Oh, man, these data dropouts really cost. They're five miles. Wait a minute, they got to be five miles south and short. What'd Charlie say? I haven't told him yet. Why not? Well, you're the captain of Camelot. I throw up in my helmet. Yeah, I cleaned it out with the vacuum blows. Boy, it's a good thing somebody thought of that. Yeah, I'd have choked to death, right? Nah. I'd have choked to death. Now, you spotted him. You tell him. Get over there to the window. Get on that mic to Charlie. Yeah. 
Mr. Inglehart, would you believe Little Dipper? We found him. They're sitting right in the bright wave from Tycho. Halfway between the crater Ponds D and the Seabrook group. Good work, sir. Good work. Check the coordinates on Lunar Chart 19. Doc? Uh, your temperature's up another half a degree. I want you to stay in your seat, rest and sleep if you can. I want you strong and alert for that docking and rendezvous. Doc, you got a pretty good bedside manner, considering you're a quarter million miles away. Yeah, well, I charge by the mile. Will you see the bill? Charlie? Yeah, Ben? Charlie, I'd like to tell Rick who found him. Good, go ahead. Rick? Yes, Ben? Yeah, Rick, the kid found you. He spotted you about five miles southeast of the target. You're nuts. We can't be that far off. Is he sure? I'll stake my life on it. Wrong. It's our life you're staking. How are the rocks? No rocks, I'm sorry to say. No igneous rocks, just coarse grain stuff. Very friable and crumbly. Ben, can I say something to him? Yeah, go on. Captain Lawrence, this is EJ. Is there a small rill directly south of you? Negative. I'm looking south, but I can't see any sign of a depression. Are you sure you've got us right? Rick. Yes, Charlie. The uh, geologists in the back room have plotted EJ's coordinates. If EJ's right, and I think he is, there's a dead-end rill south of you. If you find those rocks there, your position will then be confirmed. Okay? Look, Rick, let's chance it. One final look-see across that rill. Charlie, how can we trust... Here we go around the back side again. Yeah. Base is loaded, two strikes, three balls. Ben, you think they'll try it? You'll think they'll go looking for those rocks? You know something? All the time we've been up here, i never even seen the backside. You think it could clue me in? Well, we just passed Mayor Oriental. It's very big and stirred up looking like... Something really big splashed into it. Is this supposed to come from a meteor or a volcano? Well, it's still arguing that one. I get the cemetery feeling. Never knew it was so dead down there. Not one blade of grass, not a tree, some shade under it, no lakes. You know something? What? It's beautiful. It looks like maybe sometime way back in the beginning. There was trees down there. Grass and, and water and cows and sheep and butterflies. You ever read about the land of milk and honey? Yeah, my mama used to read it to me. I was just wondering if, if the moon could have ever been like that. Can you come to the window now? Uh, keep, keep talking, kid. Well, we're coming up on the Terminator, and the colors are changing. Lots of black shadows seem to stick out so far, I can see them curving around the moon. The sun streaks stretch around the moon the other way. It's not like a cemetery anymore. Big peak right over in the middle of a, a big crater. Oh, the whole thing is so clear. You can see every wrinkle. Compliments the creator. Charlie. Be sure to allow time for coming out of there. You're going to be carrying what we hope are crystalline rocks. Lots of them. Charlie, this is it. This has got to be it. This piece I'm holding looks like pure anorthosite. This has got to be the original crust stuff. Look, look at it. Huh? Charlie, tell the good Dr. Krauss we have found the Genesis stone. What's he mean, Genesis stone? He means the beginning, as it was in the beginning. If Will Krause is right and if Rick and Dave are right, we're bringing home the oldest thing known to man. Older than anything on Earth? You betcha. Little Dipper, here we come, moon rocks and all. Let's take it home. Hey, EJ. If I spot him first, you gotta buy me a ticket to the next Super Bowl game. And if I spot him first, you have to buy me a ticket to the World Series. Deal.
Greg. Huh? It's gonna be the World Series. Oh, drifted off our inertial altitude. EJ. Is it pitch? No, it's you all. All right, four degrees. That's the hair. That's it. Cancel it right there. Take your hand off. I'm okay. Closing at range rate of seven feet per second. Amalot, I see you large and clear, and you never looked lovelier. I have the bomber pole in place. Now I'm breaking. Stand by for docking, Camelot. Four feet. Three feet, closing fast. Maybe a little low now. Okay, in position. I have capture, Houston. I read you. EJ, the valve to repressurize a tunnel is over there. I know which one. Uh, All right, EJ, three turns. EJ, it's a wrong valve. Quick, turn it off. We're, we're all the way back. We'll push harder. It's stuck. Rick. Rick, we got a stuck valve. Venting cabin pressure to outside. PSI 3.8 and we're falling. We'll overpressure here and get to you as fast as we can, Ben. Get in your suit system, quick. Cabin pressure is now 3.7 PSI. Ben has enough oxygen in his suit system, but the question is, does EJ have enough? DJ and a little dipper. The three of you stay in your suits and depressurize Camelot. Roger. All right, kid. It's gonna be cold today. You gotta keep your brain warm. Now listen, EJ, and listen hard. We're gonna live off the oxygen in our suits, and you're gonna live off the pressure system in the LM. All right? All right, EJ. All right, do you know where the carbon dioxide warning light is? Ye yes, sir. All right, you're going to be on minimum cabin heat and minimum oxygen. If that yellow light goes on, it means you need more O2. So you turn the valve. You understand? You turn the PSI valve slowly to the right. Yes, sir. All right, and when the, when the yellow light goes out, you turn it back to where it was. You understand? Yes, sir. How long will I have to stay in here? Just till we hit the atmosphere. Two and a half days. It's really stuck. I can't move it at all. Ben, Dave, Rick, 
Don't take off your helmets. You're not going to eat. You're not going to drink. For two and a half days. Oxygen is going to be your meat and potatoes from this point on. Talk as little as possible. Use every means to conserve your energy. I want a conference immediately. I want the spacecraft experts from Grumman and Rockwell with open lines to California and Long Island. I want the bank of five blue computers preempted. Oh, plus a special overload circuit to feed the MIT bank in Massachusetts. I want two doctors. Right. I want the answers to several problems. And if I don't get those answers, well, they may not survive long enough to reach entry interface. Okay, this is what I need, what I want. I want a plan that will cut down water consumption in the CSN to as much as, oh, maybe one point per hour. And sooner or later, the later the better, we're going to have to bring the boy back into the command module. And that won't be easy with our reduced air supply. I need a plan for that. I guess what I really, what I'm really asking you for is a, a new procedure. A procedure that will leave Camelot with enough life support to get them through. The boy, as well as the others, all the way to the water. You uh, consider any of these problems uh, too tough to, to solve? Let me know now, or as soon as possible. You got any questions? Okay, get to work. I need some answers. I'm getting a yellow light. Huh? I'm getting a yellow light. Oh, God. Okay, Jack. Rick, this is Capcom. Uh, Camelot here. Come in, Leroy. Can you plug EJ into the Omni-A link? Roger. Can you hear me, EJ? Come in, EJ. Yes, sir. You have a yellow light. The air in Little Dipper is impure. Hit that valve. Still yellow? Yes, sir. No, it's, it's gone out. Good. Good. Now back valve. Feeling better? Yes, sir. Sir? Yes, EJ? I'm awful cold. Look, son, the most important time to bring Camelot up to full pressure is when it's as close to Earth as possible, when we hit the atmosphere. Now, you'll be back in Camelot then. That's when it counts. Now, we have to save air for that. Is there enough air in, in here to last that long? Well, everyone here on the ground is working on a solution to that. Working very, very hard, working every minute. You understand? Yes, sir. Good boy. Break on, Tom. Right. Uh. Rick, Charlie wants to talk to you. He's on. I want EJ on this too, Rick. EJ, can you hear me? Yes, 
Yes, sir, Mr. Inglehart. Okay, now listen. EJ cannot come through the atmosphere and Little Dipper with no heat shield. He'll burn up. So the plan is to keep him in the LM until just before re-entry begins. At the last possible moment, repeat, the last possible moment, you transfer EJ back to Camelot. And there should be enough reserve in Little Dipper to overpressurize it just before you break the seal in the tunnel. And that overpressurization should flow into Camelot, upping both the oxygen and the pressure. Now, when that's done, quickly seal off the tunnel and jettison Little Dipper. You read that? Gotcha. EJ, did you follow all that? Yes, sir. All right, now hang on, son. You've been doing just fine. But uh, you're still quite a way out, about a day and a half. So save your strength. Don't talk unless you really have to. And that goes for all of you. Captain Lawrence? Yes, EJ. I can't stand the cold. Houston. Go ahead, Rick. The kid sounds like he's freezing to death. Plug him in. He's in. EJ, can you hear me? Yes, sir, Mr. Inglehart. I want you to stay awake now, son. It's so cold. I know. You've been doing great. Not much longer now. Much longer. Oh, just a few more hours. So sleepy. Yes, I know, but you can't. You can't go to sleep. EJ? EJ, you know what we're gonna do when you get back, hmm? We're gonna throw you a great big wing ding here in Houston for all of you, huh? As soon as you fly in after splashdown. Oh, and your hometown, Titusville, they're flying in your parents. You'll be able to talk to them as soon as you get your medical discharge from the Lunar Receiving Lab. Oh, and how about this? Your, uh, your friend, now, what's his name? Joey. He's gonna be there, too. How about that, huh? EJ? Charlie? Ben, I told you not to talk. Charlie, you ain't gonna keep him awake by telling him what a great big hometown hero he's gonna be. You don't know this kid. You gotta leave him to the experts. EJ? Yes, Ben. You ain't sorry you came along, are you, kid? Sorry? Oh, no, sir. Just sorry. I pulled that boner with the wrong valve. Boner? Kid, you got us off the moon. Without you, we'd be part of those rocks and rills down there forever and ever. Now we're going home, and we got you to thank for that. Sure, you helped us. Now it's our turn to help you. A lot of help you're going to be if you keep talking away all your strength. I'll tell you what, EJ. We're gonna move you a little up some, all right? Okay. Can you look out your right-hand window? Yeah. Big, ain't it, EJ? Ain't it big? EJ? What's it look like to you? Come on, tell us about it. Like you told me about the moon. Come on, EJ, speak. Get that busy mind of yours working. EJ, this is the captain. Tell us what you see. That's an order. Well, I think this is what it would look like to somebody coming in for the first time from way out in space, looking for a place to settle. You've already seen the moon, but... He wouldn't want to land there. It's too dead. Remember? And he's looked at Mars. Oh, but that, that's too hot. And Venus has got all those poison clouds. So, he just passed them all by. He's still looking. And then he sees this one. And he says, this is it. It's going up to the water. Could have been looking for a thousand years just for this spot in the whole universe. You could tell 
Even from this far out, this is where it's got to be. This was the one God picked out for us. You know what it would look like to somebody like that, Ben? What, kid? Like it's covered with milk and honey. Ben? Yeah, AJ? There's a funny smell in here. Like ashes. You hear that? His oxygen's running out. AJ? Yes, sir. Don't have to wait any longer. This is it. Do you know anything about baseball? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. This has to work like a perfectly executed hit and run. The timing has to be perfect, you understand? The first thing you're going to do, though, is turn the cabin pressure gauge wide open. You got that? DJ? Come in, a little dipper. DJ? DJ? He's nearly out of gas. We gotta go in there. We're not close enough to the atmosphere yet. Well, he's close enough for me. DJ? DJ, do you hear me? He, yes. Start the egress procedure. Turn cabin pressure valves full open. Do you understand? Turn the PSI valve slowly to the right. Is it working? Yes, sir. Now open all the oxygen valves. Do it now. It's working. Cabin pressure 3.8, starting to climb. Houston, this is Camelot. We're going to start disconnect procedures. You copy a cabin pressure rise in the LM, over. Roger, we copy. 3.8 and climbing. We're going to give EJ all the air we can spare from Camelot. I'm going to be off the circuit for a while. Do you receive? Roger, Camelot. From now on, you're on your own. Good luck. EJ? Yes, sir. Now, remember, when the pressure goes up, you're going to feel it on your eardrums. There's nothing to worry about as long as we break that seal on schedule. Ben. The hissing has stopped. What's your PSI? 5.2. That's good enough. Let's get that tunnel open. Her released. Just watch her burn. She served us well. That's as good an epitaph as any, I guess. Good food, good company. Fine, clear night. Welcome back. Yeah, we were scared there for a while. Guess you were, too. Being scared is an important part of finding yourself, Joey. Something E.J. knew all the while. How'd you hear about it, Mr. Averill? Oh? E.J. left me something I'll keep forever. Mm 
My friend, Mr. April, do not be mad at me and Joey because I did not tell you of my plans. I dreamed to fly in space. I dreamed to go to the moon. I had to go like you said, a new bee knows it has to go to get honey. I will try to help the astronauts. I will remember all the things you taught me. Astronaut E.J.